What's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel, another video. Today, I am gonna be doing a funnel pour on a white background. This is a fairly large canvas. I'm not used to working with the giant canvases. It's not giant, but larger than I'm used to. The color palette I'm using today is a cadmium red DPU from Liquitex Basics, fluorescent red from Liquitex Basics, fluorescent orange, fluorescent yellow, and some gold. And I have a little tiny bit of black because sometimes I like to use the black. I'm not gonna use that much in this one though. But it's gonna be a fire inspired pour. I just really like the colors together. And with that, like, let's just get started getting this base coat put down. So all my paints have been mixed at a five to one Floetrol to paint ratio. So they are very thin. I know I have a whole lot, but I have a whole lot of canvas to cover. So we're just gonna do this. And then when I'm done, I am gonna scoop up all this excess and use it in a different pour. But that'll probably be in a different video. So for now, we're just gonna get this paint. Look at how fluid that is, jeez. So how's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Just living the life, you know? Just having a great time. And I wanted to ask you all a question. Have you all noticed that your Artist Loft white paint has a bunch of clumps in it recently? Because I've never had that issue like this in the past where you know, it's a brand new tube or bottle and it just has so many, so much clumps of paint in it that you almost have to strain it or you're gonna end up with some craziness on your canvas. I've had to strain my white twice today because the first time I thought I had gotten it all out, but apparently I was mistaken. So yeah, I mean, I'm curious, has that been, has anybody else been experiencing that? Because recently that's been driving me crazy. Because I don't like having these giant lumps in my paint. And it's not the Floetrol because I've been straining my Floetrol through a uh, piece of pantyhose. So it's not that. So I don't know. I'm at a loss almost, y'all. So if y'all have any kind of insights, maybe you've been dealing with it too, let me know, because I'd love to hear that and know that I'm not alone. But let me take the heat gun real quick. I'm gonna pop any of these surface bubbles from me pouring the paint out, because I really don't want to have many bubbles at all. So we have a super thin base coat. It's gonna be so cool. I'm excited for this one because these colors are just amazing. So I was thinking of doing maybe a, like a lazy W and then trying to blow it out to possibly get some serpent or phoenix looking shapes out of it. I think it's gonna be super cool, but we won't know until we do it. So I am gonna start with this really deep red. And all the paints have been mixed five to one as well. There's a small amount of silicone in all of these, one to two drops in these cups. I'm gonna use more yellow than normal because I feel like the yellow on that deep red will really pop. And you know, when you use black, we don't wanna use that much. So I did not use much black at all. I'm just layering them in the funnel. I have the funnel pushed down onto the canvas to kind of keep it trapped in there for now. And then we're gonna move it. It's summertime, y'all. 
It's so cool to, all right, let's do this. It's so cool that it's like really warming up. Oh, wow. It's making some greens, which I, I did expect that. But, all right, so we're gonna stop you here. Look at that. Look at those cells. My goodness. All right, so we'll get a little bit more of that deep red. I'm gonna skip the lighter red and go right to the, the lighter colors, see if I can uh, make this the back part of it, really cool with the gold. There we go. All right, let's see what we get out of this, huh? I'm gonna tap it too, because those provide, like tapping the funnel as the paint's coming out provides a different effect. All right, and we need to stop, so. There we go. I already have a cup of water over here that I'm just gonna put this funnel into so that the paint doesn't dry onto it. Because, well, this is cool looking already. It does, it almost has like a snakeskin look to it, which is interesting, really interesting. Some of those really bright yellows, they did get kind of lost in that deep red, which is fine because we're still gonna manipulate it and I'm sure that those colors are gonna come out. So right now I'm just, I'm hitting it with the heat gun, trying to help anything develop that would have been hidden right beneath the surface. But yeah, this is cool looking, man. I'm really glad that I did this because this is super cool. Let me grab my handy dandy straw because I'm not even gonna bother stretching this because the paint isn't very thick at all. So I think I wanna start blowing here to kind of feather that out a little bit. So we're gonna do that. Oh, whoa, look at those cells blowing out of there. I'm gonna try to keep some of that white in there. I don't wanna distort it too much. But I feel, yeah, that looks so cool. Man, that is so cool. I love that. And there's one thing that I know I can do to it and it won't disrupt it too much. So I want more of that bright yellow to kind of contrast with this. So I am gonna just, I'm gonna add some to it, especially in that corner. Cause see how it still blends pretty well, but there's that pop of color right there. Then if you manipulate it to such a way, it kind of almost looks natural, like it flowed out of there that way. And that's kind of the goal. I like some of these really small wisps that are just forming just because of the flow draw and the paint interacting with each other. 
but I do like these feathered out, uh, fanned out portions where it's been blown. That looks really wicked. I want to feather this out a little bit because I'm seeing that yellow poking through. Yeah, that's awesome. I want to kind of try to extend that orange just a little. fantastic this is really nice I really like the way this is coming out I think if I were to change anything about this right now it would be that I used a little bit more white instead of the black probably because the lacing with the white that was just around the funnel as I was moving it as it pulled that white over it created this really cool lacing effect and everywhere that I'm seeing that small tiny minute tiny amount of black that I used because you, you saw it I used a very small amount I think if all these were lighter and it would really brighten up those other colors like the yellows and the reds and the orange I think with that dark it almost creates a shadow almost I mean almost kind of looks like the the top of a snake and that's wicked that's really cool um, let me see what else do I, I don't know if I want to change anything else about this to be completely transparent with you guys. I actually like the way this looks a whole lot. Well, instead of me being just here staring at it for you, let me just bring you guys down. We're all going to look at this together because the metallic right here from where I added the gold to the funnel is really cool looking. So. Let's get down there. We're going to take a look at it and tell me what you think about it. So like I was talking about, that white lacing from just what was around the funnel that the funnel pulled over the top of it. And then, I mean, I really like these this feather effect that the silicone and the paints provided right there. And as we travel further down, you're starting to see some of those little gradients of the yellow, the orange, and the red combining. They're absolutely gorgeous. And then you come over here, we're gonna start getting towards where that metallic gold was. You can start to see it. And then it becomes much, much more pronounced as it was flowing out. But yeah, this thing is Awesome. This thing is so cool looking. What do you think? If you want to watch another video just like this, click the screen right now and I'll see you there.